Well, we gather here on this Easter Sunday to celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And today I just want to go over just how important the resurrection really is. You know, there are three parts to our salvation. The first part is the incarnation. If Jesus had not come into the world as God's only begotten son, we could not have a savior. If he had not been crucified on the cross as the sinless lamb of God, we would not have salvation. If he had not been resurrected from the dead, we would not have a savior. I had somebody put it this way once. They said that if Jesus was the son of God and he came to earth and he was born and he walked among us and he taught and then he had a heart attack and died, we would just have a good teacher. If he was born, if he taught, and then he wound up being killed for what he taught, we'd have a martyr. But because the sinless son of God was born into this world, walked among us, taught us, suffered and died upon the cross, and then was raised from the dead, we have a savior. It takes all three parts for us to have even the possibility of salvation. And the three things that I want to lift up that I think are extremely important to us about uh, the whole resurrection is first of all, the resurrection certifies your salvation. Next, it sets your course. And then finally, it defines your destiny. Those are the three things that I want us to look at this morning. And so first of all, the resurrection certifies your salvation. As we said, your salvation doesn't begin and end with the resurrection. But without the resurrection, the cross is not validated. If Jesus died for our sins and was not resurrected, we would not have the validation and the completion of all that God had planned for our salvation. Let's be real about this. Salvation doesn't come to us just because God loves us. I heard it best and I shared this the other night uh, on Good Friday. I want to share it again today. Uh, Oswald Chambers described it best when he said, the death of Jesus Christ is the fulfillment in history of the very mind and intent of God. There is no place for seeing Jesus Christ as a martyr. His death was not something that happened to him, something that might have been prevented. We know this, this is just an aside, Jesus got on his knees and he prayed, Father, if there be any way, let this cup pass from me. And apparently his father said, I'm sorry, son, there's no other way. Because he got up and he went to the cross. His death wasn't something that just happened to him. His death was the very reason that he came. I can remember back during my time of faith uh, searching and whenever I finally, the night that I came to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior, and the scripture came to mind, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And I, I wondered, okay, now what did Jesus mean when he said this? And I saw, it was around Easter 44 years ago, that I saw that the cross was at the very pinnacle of why Jesus came. And he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. No other way. Well, I thought about that and I thought, so how does that work? And I saw 
that the church said that our sin separated us from God. And that whenever I thought about that, I remembered there was a time when somebody said, you know, God must really hate sin. Look what his son had to go through because of it. And then I thought, yeah, Jesus must hate sin too. Look what he had to go through because of it. And at that moment, I realized that my life was filled with sin. And that is what separated me from God. And that is why I couldn't sense his presence. And that's why I couldn't sing the song that we just sang. He lives and really mean it because he didn't live in my heart. Everybody around me, I thought, was singing it and believing it. But I knew there was a gap between me and God. And all of a sudden, I realized it was my sin that put that gap there. And I realized there was nothing I could do to remove that chasm between me and God. I could not undo one of the things that I had done that had separated me from God. I couldn't take back any pain I inflicted on anyone. I couldn't take back one lie I ever told. All of it I was accountable for. And I realized that whenever I stood before God, he wasn't going to ask me about what a, some guy and gal did back in the Garden of Eden. I was going to be accountable for what I did. I was accountable for me and what I had done with the life that he had shared with me. And I realized I didn't have a chance. I realized I was going to be spending the rest of my life trying to postpone dying. You can't really enjoy life when you're trying not to die. I mean, get on the freeway, go home. When you're heading home today, if you're thinking, I've got to be real careful or I'm going to die, I'm going to die, I'm going to die, uh, you're not going to have any fun getting home. And this is just it. You can't enjoy life if you live life trying to stay alive. You've got to come to grips with things in some way. And I realized my, the rest of my life was going to be so bleak as I tried to avoid death. Because I knew when I died, I was going straight to hell. That was all there was to it. And I just, I needed to stay away from there as long as I could. And so I thought, now wait a minute. Wait a minute. The church, the Bible, they say that Jesus died for our sins. But I don't know what to do with that. I don't know how to apply that. And the scripture said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father but by me. And I realized that somehow it was through Jesus. And I knew that somehow it was tied to the cross. And so I just cried out, said, Jesus, help me. And all of a sudden, he was right there. And all of a sudden, that, ga that chasm was closed and he's made it clear that it's that simple for that chasm to be closed for anybody. Well, Oswald Chambers goes on and he says, never build your case for forgiveness on the idea that God is our father and he will forgive us because he loves us. That contradicts the revealed truth of God in Jesus Christ. It makes the cross unnecessary and the redemption much ado about nothing. God forgives sin only because of the death of Christ. God could forgive people in no other way than by the death of his son. And Jesus, it says in Hebrews 2, 9, is exalted as Savior because of his death. We see Jesus it says, for the suffering of death, crowned with glory and honor. The greatest note of triumph ever sounded in the ears of a startled universe was that sounded on the cross of Christ. It is finished. 
That is the final word in the redemption of humankind. Anything that lessens or completely obliterates the holiness of God through a false view of his love contradicts the truth of God as revealed by Jesus Christ. Never allow yourself to believe that Jesus Christ stands with us and against God out of pity and compassion, or that he became a curse for us out of sympathy for us. Jesus Christ became a curse for us by divine decree. Our part in realizing the tremendous meaning of his curse is the conviction of sin. Conviction is given to us as a gift of shame and repentance. It is the very, it is the great mercy of God. Jesus Christ hates the sin in people and Calvary is the measure of his hatred. That is so true. And uh, my life, my testimony reflects what Oswald Chambers wrote probably a hundred years before I was born. And it's the same in life after life after life that finds eternal life in Christ Jesus. The resurrection makes it clear that the way of the cross is the right way and the only way to the Father. Some of y'all follow me on Facebook and you see the memes that I post and the funny stuff that I post, but I hope you saw the one thing I posted this past week where it showed the empty tomb, the stone rolled away, and along front there's all these gravestones, Muhammad, Confucius, Buddha, and it goes on and on and on and on. All these other religious leaders and secular leaders are dead, but the tomb is empty because only one lives, and that is Jesus Christ our Lord. He is the way, the truth, and the life. There is no other way. The resurrection makes it clear. The resurrection through the resurrection, God makes it clear that the only way to him is through the cross of his son. And his, the resurrection certifies all of that as the only way. So first of all, the resurrection certifies your, res, your salvation. Next, it sets your course. There's so many people just bumping around in life wondering What's life really all about? You know, I, I also posted this thing last week. It said, uh, I love to ask little kids what they're going to be when they grow up because I'm still trying to find out what I'm going to do myself, you know. And the thing is, there's a lot of truth in that. A lot of people live their whole lives and they die trying to figure out what they're going to be when they finally grow up. The thing is, uh, that uh, the thing is, is that the resurrection sets our course. We know the way to go. We know what life is all about. Finally, there's a story told of an African Muslim who became a Christian. His friends asked, why have you become a Christian? He answered, well, it's like this. Suppose you were going down the road and suddenly the fo road forked in two directions and you didn't know which way to go. There at the fork were two men, one dead and one alive. Who would you ask which way to go? Well, this is just it. He sets the course. He sets the direction. He shows us. He'll help us know which way to go in life. The resurrection sets our course. We know the right way to go. We know which fork to take in the road. We know there's only one right fork to take. Next, it defines your destiny. We're all born, it seems, with this sense of there being more to our lives than we seem to be realizing. That there's something Something beyond just what we're doing in the here and now. The resurrection 
defines our destiny. Our destiny is ultimately to be the Lord's 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no matter what comes, no matter uh, what we're faced with. Let me show you what I mean. Back on Easter Sunday in 1973, Uganda groaned under the terror of Idi Amin. Still fresh in young pastor Kifa Simpangi's memory was a face burned beyond recognition, the sight of soldiers cruelly beating a man, and the horrible sound of boots crushing bones, all for the crime of being a Christian. But Easter of 1973, Pastor Simpangi bravely and openly preached on the risen Lord in his hometown's football stadium of over 7,000 people. After the service, five of Idi Amin's secret police followed Simpangi back to his church and closed the door behind them. Five rifles pointed at Pastor Simpangi's head. We're going to kill you for disobeying Amin's orders, the captain said. If you have something to say, say it before you die. Pastor Simpangi, thinking of his beautiful wife and lovely little girl, began to shake. But the Lord, the risen Lord, living in his heart, gave him the courage to speak. Do what you must, he said. The word of God says that in Christ, I'm already dead. And that my real life is hidden with him in God. It is not my life that is in danger, but yours. I am alive in the risen Lord, but you are still dead in your sins. May he spare you from eternal destruction. The leader looked at Simpongi for a long, long time. Then he lowered his rifle and said, Will you pray for us? Simpongi did. And those five officers were converted through the witness of Simpongi's bravery. They also became his brothers in Christ and his protectors rather than his enemies from that point on. Pastor Simpongi found his destiny when he found the Lord. That's what the resurrection is all about. Those three things are so important. How about your salvation? Has it been certified? Have you gone through the steps of really realizing that his way is the only way? The resurrection says so. And it's just a step that you have to take to step from death into life. How about your course in life? Are you just bumping around, bumping into walls, wondering what life is really all about? In him, your course is set. How about your destiny? Is your life hidden in Christ so that even if you're facing five rifles pointed at your head, you would not be afraid to speak the truth? All of this comes because of the resurrection. And all of this is yours whenever you just finally embrace John 3, 16. For God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have eternal life. The resurrection says, this is so who can contradict that? In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.